All right, so what if you have a speed light and let's say you use pocket wizards to trigger those or you have a Godox strobe and you use their Godox triggering system for those or maybe even have a Profoto system and you use a Profoto triggering system to use those and maybe you have an Einstein and you use a MC2 pocket wizard to trigger that. And what if you had one unit that could trigger them all, sort of one ring to rule them all. What if, what if there was something like that and so you wouldn't have to use separate triggering systems? Well, there is, and it's called The Raven from a company called Fusion TLC. Now, uh, I've been beta testing this thing for about a month now. Uh, it's phenomenal, and uh, I'm gonna give you a first look at The Raven. Hey everyone, this is Mike here from Mike McGee Photography. Okay, so what exactly is this thing? Uh, this is going to be one of those things where you never knew it existed and then once you find out what it is, you're going to want one because that's exactly how I felt. Well, let's see. So this is called the Raven. It's a device from a company called Fusion TLC. This company was created by uh, the guy who created Pocket Wizard, uh, Jim Clark. So. This is a new company, um, but it has sort of a connection with Pocket Wizard and that Jim Clark is part of the company. Now, I didn't know what this did, um, but I was primarily signed on as a beta tester to work with the Einstein and make sure that it would work and be compatible with both the Einsteins as well as the new link from Paul C. Buff and um, also with newer camera bodies such as the Nikon Z6 II or Z7 II. Now, this is my backup Nikon D750, but uh, this triggering system works with even the Nikon Z6 II, Nikon Z7 II mirrorless, as well as a whole range of camera bodies, also older devices as well. Now, what exactly does it do? Well, it is a triggering system, but unlike other triggering systems in the past, it can work with multiple brands. So you're not stuck with, okay, I have a pocket wizard trigger. Let's say you're using the, the Mini TT1 or the Flex TT5 as a trigger. Well, now you're in the pocket wizard system. Okay, but you bought a Godox. Well, now, okay, you're either gonna have to attach that separately, but you can't utilize sort of the built-in receiver that's in your Godox. But with this, you can. This has, just with a simple touch of a screen, you can change the triggering system from Wiz, as it shows right here on the icon display, and you can just change it to, oh, I'd like to shoot up uh, Godox. And you just do that, and now you see that the Godox logo is on there, and now it's gonna be set to your Godox channel to trigger your Godox um, strobes. It's pretty remarkable. I didn't know if anything like this even existed, but it does. Um, now, rather than look at my ugly mug, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this around to do kind of a close-up look so you can see this beautiful display, which also has sort of a key ring dial here that allows you to scroll, do different power configurations and such, even just with the dial. But you can manage everything off the back of your camera, including TTL, high-speed sync. It's phenomenal. So uh, let's take a look. Okay, so what does it look like when it powers up? All right, well, let's just go ahead and see. Just push the home button on the right-hand side for about one second. You let go, and you'll see the full-color OLED display on the front. Truthfully, the, the front, to me, this whole bezel, it really looks like a high-end tag watch or something like that. It's I can't get over how much I enjoy the interface on this thing. Um, just visually, the, the fonts, I'm a typography font nerd, so I, I just like the clean sans serif fonts. Everything just looks clean and functional. That's what I really like about this, this system. So anyway, it is a touch screen, so I'm just gonna briefly go through the touch screen and just give you some options. So you can see that if I swipe down from the top, this is sort of where your, your settings and your menu system is. Um, now you have a brightness setting right here. I can tap on the brightness. Now this rotary dial right here, it actually has a function. So I'm just gonna turn down the brightness and you can see that it just goes down. It's almost black now. And you do have an auto function where right now the studio lights are pretty bright. So it's going to not really function as well, I think on screen, but maybe it will. Um, I usually just set it to auto, but if you were just to be safe, I'll put it on like full power just to get a nice visual there. And then once you have that set, you can hit that confirm. So that's your, your brightness setting. I set this up and 
pre-mounted so that it would be nice and easy to see on screen. However, it's also important to note this quick mounting system that they have is also just fantastic. It doesn't have that sort of tedious dial system that you have to dial down here when you're doing normally like a, a speed light into a hot shoe or something. It has two buttons on the sides and once you just have these buttons, you just click it and pull it out. And then once you want to put it in, you just keep those uh, buttons held and let go. It's just a quick release system, so you're good to go. Just mount it and go. Uh, again, a lot of thought was put into the design of this product and it shows. Okay, so what's next? Well, we have our channel list right here. And this is where some serious tech impresses me. Okay, so you have a choice of 32 different channels. Now, normally, when you have 32 different channels, it might be there might be no display whatsoever, and it's just simply a channel list. And you pick channel one, you start firing, and you're five minutes into your shoot, and you're getting like two or three misfires every every couple of minutes, and then you know there's interference. Well, this leaves all that guesswork out the window. So now you have a nice little bar graph showing in this exact environment so you can see on channel 3 there's quite a bit of noise so it's not really a strong signal don't select channel 3 in my studio um, but you can also go through here and just see all 32 channels has a nice little bar graph showing if there's any sort of noise that would influence your shot and make it less reliable of a channel this right here is the type of tech that just uh, blows me away because this is exactly the type of thing you want to see when you want a professional environment where reliability is key. You don't want to press the button and have misfires because that just, it's, it's not only aggravating, but it looks unprofessional. So you can go through all 32 channels and then again, your environment will be different than this one, but I'm gonna go all the way back to channel one and select that because that's a pretty solid choice and it's simple. So I'm gonna go through that. So that's that bar graph system that they have built into the Raven that I think is phenomenal. This is the choice for the front of the device, which has an illuminator that will allow you to turn this light on or off based on the environment, whether it needs like, if you're in a low light situation and you need an added pulse of light so that you can lock that focus, the Raven has one up on top. And what makes it so good is that a lot of the built-in illuminators that are, are on certain camera bodies, if you have a large lens hood, it will actually block where it can emit that light. And they even say in the manual of, I think like the Nikon, uh, you know, the Z6 II or whatever, it'll, it'll say, uh, you know, be, be aware of using a large lens hood because it can block any sort of uh, light that would come out. I know that the D750 has that as well. Um, so this now has an illuminator that's far and above, way out of the range of any sort of large lens hood. You're good to go. So you have that choice right here. Just tap in that, turn it on, turn it off. These are just your sounds, the little, you sort of get that feedback. I actually enjoy the sounds. I like when you turn the dials, you can hear those. So you know where, what's happening. Uh, you just hear that it's going through the settings and I like that. Last one is uh, your brand settings. So this is again, where some serious tech is involved. Now I have it set to pocket wizards, but what if you had a Godox uh, strobe for this particular shoot? and you wanted to just set it to Godox. Well, you just set it to Godox, and you could even have a second system. Let's say that was set to Pocket Wizard. You could tap that, and your main system is now Godox and Pocket Wizard right there. Simultaneously, you're gonna fire off a shot, and whether you have Godox and Pocket Wizard, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna fire. So uh, you have now multiple brands within one device, which is pretty phenomenal. So I just have Pocket Wizard, so I'm gonna leave it as Pocket Wizard 1, and uh, second is gonna be off, and so that's what I'm gonna do. Yes, this is a key. It does do cloud-based updates for the firmware, and you're probably wondering, well, how does it receive those updates? Well, you can actually just go into the settings and select your SSID and enter in your Wi-Fi password, and once it's already entered into the system, it will connect. Um, I already did this once, so um, I won't have to do it again. And go to the cloud icon. So now, as you can see, I am up to date. However, if there was a firmware update, you would see something that says, okay, it's gonna take approximately 
you know, four minutes to update or what have you, and it will just download the firmware and do it right from this device. Now, if you didn't have Wi-Fi access, there are gonna be ways to do that through the USB port on the side. And if you're a Mac user, it, you're even in better luck because unlike some of the Godox or Flashpoint uh, firmware updates that require a PC, in those cases, Mac users are kind of out, left out in the cold. But for the Raven, you're good to go. You just pop in the USB. Um, this device will then show up almost like an SD card um, on your desktop, even on, on the Mac side of things. I'm a Mac user. Um, and then you can just drag a firmware file in an emergency situation right onto the device. So uh, you're not going to have to deal with any sort of uh, creating a virtual box and creating some, some PC um, system on a Mac or borrowing somebody with a Windows machine if you're on a Mac. Um, so anyway, updating firmware is as easy as you could possibly make it just by tapping on that cloud icon and going from there. All right, and now for something completely different. Okay, so my big selling point and what I really wanted the most out of the Raven was the ability to control palsy buff strobes. I have five palsy buff Einsteins as well as two of the new link strobes. Now, I'm gonna start with the Einstein demonstration. Now, I'm trying to show this both in real time to give you an idea of what's gonna happen. Now. These, although I'm putting these close together for the purpose of this video, um, imagine that this strobe is completely across the room. It's not even in the same realm. So uh, let's say it's really far away and you have five of these Einsteins set up in different areas. Now what you can do is you can give each one of these Einsteins a different zone. And if you notice, if you go down to the Einsteins, they always had the little zone A, zone B, zone C. And those zones are available with the Pocket Wizard MC2. Now, I should also state that for the Pocket Wizard MC2 to work with the Einstein and the Raven, the Pocket Wizard MC2 needs to be updated to the new e-release software from Pocket Wizard. So you just use their uh, their firmware update tool. It costs like nine bucks for the MC2, and that will allow you to use the Raven as well as more advanced features of the MC2. So it sort of brings it into the modern realm. All right. So if you notice. This, I'm on, just to give you an idea, I'm gonna be on channel one, okay? So in the past, when I was channel one with a pocket wizard, I would be on actual channel one. And I'm gonna go this way, and it would just say CH01. Ah, I went so fast, they had like, there we go. Okay, so normally I would be on channel one, and you would think channel one, channel one, they sync up, but no, 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 no. That actually is not, capable of working with this system because you'll see that it says zone NA, meaning it doesn't have the zone capabilities. So what's really nice about this is that the Raven and Pocket Wizard work in conjunction with the zone feature. So you, instead of being channel one, you actually want to change this to, I'm going to go all the way past the 32. I'm going to go, so it goes to CTL1. And then that allows you to punch in different zones. Now, what do these zones mean? It means you can have zone one, which is, let's say, your background lights only. And you can have some Einstein set to zone B for maybe your key light. And then you can have zone C for some sort of hair light or something. So that that way you'll be ma managing everything from the Raven without having to touch one of these Einsteins. So let's go through with it. Okay, so now that we have everything all set up, again, we're in channel one, we have zone A. I am going to now control zone A. Let's imagine that this is our background light. I'm gonna control zone A, not from changing the actual settings on the back of the Einstein, but from the Raven itself. So all I have to do is tap on zone A, and you'll see that that little A now has a little highlighted circle around it. And now I get to use the dial to actually make changes right here on the back of the camera and you'll see the corresponding power changes that happen on all strobes, all Einstein strobes that have zone A. This to me is phenomenal. So you now have, it's similar to let's say the Cyber Commander in the CyberSync system, but I was never a fan of the Cyber Commander's user interface. This interface works with the way my brain works. It's just visual, it's very clear, the nice dials, you can even see the little green illuminator there for the power. Uh, it just works great for me. So again, you wanna dial that down a little bit, then you just tap on zone A, 
and you're just going to dial that down and you can see it just go right down here on your Einstein that would be halfway across your studio. So uh, it's really impressive stuff. Now again, if you were had another Einstein that was let's say your key light, all you'd have to do is change that to zone B. So you would change that to zone B. I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. Go to zone B. So now we're in zone B. Now you can see that zone B is over here. I'm going to tap zone B and now I'm going to start adjusting the power. And again, you can see it just adjust the power right there in real time as you go right on top of your camera. So if you have, let's say your background lights are in zone A and you have two background lights in a 45 degree angle. Well, now you can just type zone A. If they're a little hot, you just dial them down right from the um, convenience of the top of your camera. Uh, really efficient, really works well with your Einsteins. And so if you already have Einsteins and MC2s, all you need to do is update the MC2s to that Pocket Wizard e-release software. I think it's 10 bucks uh, for each one. Um, and then uh, you're good to go. All right, so last, uh, how about with the PulseyBuff Link? Will that do high-speed sync? Well, the answer is yes, it will. So this is kind of the key with the PulseyBuff Link at this current stage. Now, in the future, there may be the MC2 capability with the Link Right now, it does have the port for it uh, on the link, um, but unfortunately right now the MC2 only works with the Einstein. So um, how do you get high-speed sync with the Raven plus the link? Well, that little guy is the Pocket Wizard Flex TT5. So now this guy makes it all happen. Um, I just have it on Zone A, uh, Channel 1, and again, that's, that's the same channel that I have with the Raven. And uh, all you have to do is I just set this to high speed sync, have the Raven set to fire and use one of these Flex TT5s and uh, one eight thousandth of a second, no problem whatsoever. Now, yet again, with the Pocket Wizards for anything to be compatible with the Raven, as of now, you'll need to use the e-release software for the Flex TT5s as well, which means you have to upgrade them. I think they're 15 bucks. Uh, to do that, but that will allow you to just put a little piece of Velcro right here, slap this baby on the side, and if you really were in a situation where you only had pocket wizards, let's say, uh, you'll be able to shoot high-speed sync with the link, and you won't need the hub remote or any sort of pulse buff cyber sync systems. All right, so that's my first look slash review of the Raven from Fusion TLC. Now, I'm sure I left out a ton of other things that uh, you may want to be interested in about the Raven. So uh, feel free to go to Fusion TLC's website to get the full information. But this was just my first look, especially with using the Nikon as well as the Einstein. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them as uh, in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer. Otherwise, go to the knowledge base at Fusion TLC's website for any information about that. But uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to hit like. Uh, if you want to see other videos with some tips and tricks and product features and things, uh, please feel free to hit subscribe. So I'd really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching.